Good afternoon. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Directors of the Vallecitas Water District on Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Um, Um, to start off, I'd like to read notice to the public so you are aware of what's going on um, due to the evolving situation with the COVID-19 novel coronavirus and executive order N3520, so long as state or local public officials have imposed or recommended social distancing measures, Valacetus Water District will hold future meetings via teleconferencing and allow members of the public to observe and address the meeting telephonically or otherwise electronically. During this period of time, Valacetus Water District will not be making any physical location available for members of the public to observe the meeting and offer public comment. The public is encouraged to watch and participate in the meeting from the safety of their homes. The meeting can be viewed on the agenda page located on the main page of the district's website. Public comments or questions can be submitted to the following email address, public comment at vwd.org. All written comments that are received at least two hours before the meeting will be provided to the board and a record of the receipt of comment will be noted during the meeting. So at this time, I'm um, I'm going to forego the Pledge of Allegiance until we get a little more comfortable with the teleconferencing. And I'd like to start with roll call, which will be um, a verbal roll call. Um, Director Martin? Online. Thank you. Director Elathar? Present. Thank you. Director Sinella? Mm. Present. Director Evans? Thank you, Mike. I'm here. And please note that Director Hernandez is ab absent. President Evans, if I may, this is General Manager Pruham. Uh, regarding the notice to the public, uh, we did receive an email from a member of the public and we'd like to make it part of the record. If you'd like, I could read the email. It's, it's a bit lengthy, but I think I could do it somewhat quickly. Uh, okay, is this when I would do it now or would it have waited until we adopt the agenda and happen under um, public comment? I don't know. I just want to bring it up now because it, it, you mentioned it during the notice to the public that we may receive them. So, uh, uh, okay, we, we could do it during public comment. That's fine. Whatever is appropriate. So, okay. Um, we've done roll call. So we just need a, a motion to adopt the agenda for the regular meeting. Director Martin. Mm -hmm. Director Sanella, a second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Um, a roll call vote to adopt, adopt the agenda for the regular meeting. Um, Director Martin? Yes. Thank you. Director Ellitharp? Yes. Director Sinella? Yes. Director Evans? Yes. And uh, Hernandez is absent. Okay. Um, we'll move into the public comment now. So if you would like to read what you have there. Um, yeah, so this was an email we received from Mike Hunsaker, and he was re, uh, staff had reached out to Mr. Hunsaker to make sure he was aware of what was going on. I won't read the full email, although we'll make it part of the record. He, he makes several requests, and I'll, I'll jump into where he requests. So he says, uh, for today, and this is, this is his wording, I'm just reading. It says, for today, I suggest that the board allow email comments and questions for up to an hour before the meeting and read them into the record. Implement Zoom as quickly as possible, preferably before the next meeting. The video of today's meeting should be posted tomorrow. You will likely have few participants normally, so an hour cutoff for sending out links should not be too much of an added burden. Uh, this process should be extended to all subcommittees and workshops. Participants can email requests to speak on any agenda item up to the meeting start. That is a reasonable compromise, in my opinion, on a temporary basis. Zoom is attractive for a number of reasons, even after the shutdown ends. Today, please just cover the routine items such as presentations and reports. Postpone any actions to the meeting, next meeting when Zoom is implemented. Have the attorney clarify whether or not the board can take action without public real-time review and ability to speak. It would seem that the Brown Act would apply as it would constitute an illegal action by a quorum. Delayed notice invites trouble as it eviscerates public participation 
and eliminates First Amendment rights. Again, no legislative action should be taken at today's meeting. The GM and the attorney can report on how to proceed and maintain public rights. I doubt that anyone, in parentheses, including me, uh, will object to a simple direction given to staff on how to proceed. As a secondary issue, I, su I suggest an article in Splash on recommendations on what you can flush. Many individuals are using either facial tissues or flushable wipes in place of proper toilet paper. Please read my comments to the board as my oral communication. Best regards, Mike. And that's the end of his email. Thank you, uh, General Manager Pruim. Are, um, is there anything in his comments that we need to can re need to or can respond to right now? I would look for the. Oh, oh, President Evans, this is Director Sanella. Uh, I just you. wanted to I wanted to clarify both with uh, the general manager and our council um, as to a couple of things. Uh, I I thought we I mean we're using Zoom right now, so I, he referenced a couple times about what, waiting until we implement Zoom. Do you think he's just talking about the video portion, or does he just not understand that we've already implemented Zoom? And then secondly, uh, how did we determine this two-hour email? Is there, have there been any sort of standards or guidelines provided by the, by the governor's office as it pertains to these types of uh, meetings under the circumstances that we live in today? Thank you, Mike. Director Pruim? Yeah, so I'll leave the second question to Mr. Gilpin. I'll, I'll respond to the first. Um, uh, Mr. Hunsaker was fully aware that we were going to be having this Zoom meeting what I think he's referring to is that he was told that at tonight's meeting, uh, the public wouldn't have an ability to uh, make comments in real time. So I think that was his frustration. He wanted to wait until the public could react in real time as they do at a regular meeting. So, and we're hopeful that we'll have that functionality at the meeting on April 15th. We just don't have it today. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Gilpin and he could re uh, re respond to uh, any, we, you mentioned the two hour notice uh, requirement before the meeting for submittal and whether there's any restrictions on us, what we can accomplish at the meeting tonight. So with that, Jim, I'll turn it over to you. you currently there's no regulations relative to the amount of time or how you handle the submission of written, written comments. Uh, many agencies across California are setting a timeline for the written comments to be submitted. Uh, I would say they vary across the board, so I, I haven't done a canvassing of all of them. Some are, I guess, two hours before would be kind of the outside limits of what I'm seeing. Uh, others are allowing them up to an hour or somewhat before to be submitted. And to the second point, there is no restriction on, on you taking actions tonight because the Brown Act the emergency, the executive order has relieved you of, of those obligations and allowed these meetings to proceed uh, under this structure. Uh, um, thank you, Mr. Gilpum. Do any of the board members have a response or question further? President well, Evans, it's, okay. it's, Director, it's Director Stanella again. Uh, yes. I just throw it out there for board consideration, given the limited numbers of, uh, you know, e either in person or written correspondence in this case that we get, I would be comfortable if staff is moving that to 90 minutes versus two hours. Okay, Mr. Um, Director Elathar, do you have anything to add? No, I would concur with Director Sunella's comment. And Director Martin? Sure, that sounds great. Okay, now, do we need to take a vote on that? Or can, is it? <laughs> well, it, it's not really on the agenda. So, I mean, the, the gener general manager can take that into account in terms of how to handle it going forward. Okay, well, I think it's a good change as well. Thank you. Okay, so do we have a motion now to X, we move you to onto the consent calendar. So do we have a motion to accept our consent calendar or is there any item that needs to be discussed? Martin, approve, approve to uh, run the consent calendar. Thank you, second? I'll second that, Director Elbathar. Thank you. It's been moved by Director Martin and seconded by Director Elatharp that we approve the consent calendar. 
um, roll call will be Director Martin. Yes. Director Ellitharp. Yes. Director Stanella. Yes. Director Evans, yes. And Jim Hernandez is absent. Thank you. So we will move now to our action item. It's uh, 2.1, the proposed 2020 investment policy resolution. I believe yeah. that would go to you, um, Glenn. Yeah, well, actually, I'm going to turn it over to Wes. Wes Owen, our finance mm -hmm. director, is going to walk us through this uh, investment policy resolution. Wes? Good evening, President Evans, members of the board. Uh, this is virtual Wes Owen, same as uh, regular Wes Owen, but at a greater distance. Um, so tonight I'll be presenting an, uh, an annual item. Um, this is the investment policy and uh, on an annual basis, staff reviews the investment policy and brings it to the board for consideration. And this year after reviewing government state code and best practices, it's been determined that no changes are needed. Um, that's pretty much it. So with that staff recommends that the board approve and adopt the annual investment policy resolution for calendar year 2020. Wow, that was succinct. All right, um, <laughs> Director Martin, do you have a comment or question? Director Martin, move to approve. Thank you. Director Sanella, second. second. Oh, all right, are there any questions or comments? I just have to, um, a real quick one. Mm -hmm. um, I just understand that um, there's just today, I believe, the SP announced it's going to be downgrading its outlook on all the uh, U.S. public finances to a negative outlook because of the possible impacts from the virus. So do, does this have any impact on our investment policies at this particular moment? No, that would not have an impact on our investment policy. It'll be looked at through, it's basically a debt. It may have some effect on our credit rating or our okay. ability to issue debt. All right, really good. And and the second one is you said we just had our um, audit report, our annual finances. You put it in for an award, is that correct? Yes. I forgot what that was. A, 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 a call it a yes. gap. Or it was actually a, an award for excellence in financial reporting for our comprehensive annual financial report. And when do you know if we'll get that? So we submitted it on December 31st, and they told us we should know in about six months. Okay, I'm really excited about that. Thank you. All right, and finally, I had one other question. It, does this um, investment policy go before the um, Finance Committee? Usually. Typically it does, um, but there were no changes this year, so there were, we kind of determined that there was no reason to discuss it because there were no changes. Um, but Last year, for example, we had several changes recommended by our investment advisor and it was brought to the finance committee and they actually came and, and presented those changes. This year, it, there aren't any changes recommended. Thank you, very good. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we um, approve the resolution for our 2020 investment policy. Um, this will be a roll call vote as well. Um, Director Martin. Yes. Director Ellitharp. Yes. Director Sinella? Yes. And Director Evans? Yes. And once again, Jim Hernandez is absent. That's the end of our action items. So we'll move directly to reports. And I'm going to hand it over to you, um, General Manager Prum. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Just have a few items. Uh, first, just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, COVID and uh, the district's response. Uh, so we still continue to deliver our water and wastewater services despite the coronavirus spread and all the government imposed uh, shutdowns and restrictions that we've had. There are currently no Viacitos employees that have been identified as testing positive for COVID, so that's great news. Our administrative facility remains closed to the public at least until April 30th which is when the, uh, the federal government has determined uh, the thing shall be shut down. Uh, we are continuing to modify our operations, including our field operations crews will, their work schedules will be changed to minimize the risk of a widespread infection. Oh, pardon? Yeah, I'm just getting feedback there. So what we don't want to happen is to have all of our crew at work at the same time and find out that they all get infected. So we're, we're starting to split more to a 50-50 split. So if, if there is an infection, Hopefully only half of our uh, staff will get infected. 
Uh, we have many employees working from home or under modified work schedules. Our customer service group is fully staffed. They're working from home, but they're fully staffed and they're ready to address any customer concerns. Uh, we're working with customers who may have trouble paying their utility bills doing, due to any economic hardships they're experiencing due to COVID. Um, the supply chain for all of our disinfection and cleaning products uh, is slow, but it, it still is continuing to meet our needs, which is good. And I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to, to weather the COVID storm and to continue to provide our essential services until uh, life gets back to normal. That's just a kind of a brief update on where we stand from a, a district perspective. Uh, second item hey, I want to talk. President, um, President, President Evans, yes, can I ask a question? Yeah, hey, Glenn, um, without going into all the details, I did, I did hear from a, a customer today who said that they were hand delivered um, basically a late notice. And I know that they, they, they admittedly didn't call us and, and it, you know, ask for any help or anything like that. But is it really a good idea to still continue uh, hand delivering uh, anything at this time, uh, especially if it, it seems like it's inconsistent with us closing down our front window? Yeah, so I, I didn't get a chance to look into that issue. We certainly will. Um, we, I, and I don't know the, I'll admit I don't know the full process. Uh, uh, Finance Director Owens may be able to illuminate on that. But I would say in general, we want to caution people. If somebody's knocking on your door, we do know that there's some uh, scam artists out there working, uh, not necessarily about against utilities, but uh, we, will, we will review our practices. Um, so Wes, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, we're not currently hand delivering anything. So I don't know <clears throat> if that was untrue or what the case was, but nothing's being hand delivered right now. Okay, that's uh, it's, it's interesting. Um, and we'll, we'll, perhaps we can talk offline because it, it I, the way it was reported to me, that there was a Valacitos truck. And, and when I say talk offline, I'm more concerned about what, what is there somebody out there scamming, um, you know, or trying to scam our customers, and that might be even a bigger issue. But, okay, we, we're certainly something we can talk about. Yeah, we'll look into the issue, though. All right, so second thing I wanted to share is uh, we will be doing some night work tonight uh, along San Marcos Boulevard right at Pico. The work's actually on Pico. We're replacing a, a larger meter. Uh, we may be impacting uh, the travel lane, a travel lane on Pico shouldn't affect traffic along San Marcos Boulevard. And again, that'll be this evening. Um, third item, I wanted to, I mentioned at a previous meeting that the delivery of our solar panels for our district-wide solar project were being delayed due to the coronavirus because they're manufactured in China. We have been informed that the panels are on a boat right now. They're heading this way and they're due to dock in the United States on April 3rd, and then they'll need to be transported to the job site. Uh, and we anticipate the installation of the panels to proceed even in light of COVID. Uh, the schedule may be affected, but uh, we, we haven't determined any uh, uh, definite schedule impacts yet. And the last item I wanna talk about is just the, uh, the next meeting. So I do anticipate that we'll be continuing these board meetings electronically or remotely in this format for the foreseeable future. And at our next meeting on the 15th, as we touched on a little bit earlier, we do wanna expand our capabilities to allow the public to participate more in real time. And that's consistent with uh, uh, and directly related to what Mr. Hunsaker's comment was about. And at that meet meeting, we'll also try to enable the uh, video features for the directors if they so choose. If you want your image to be displayed, like my image is being displayed, we will enable that feature at the next meeting too. And unless you have any questions, that's all I had for the GM report. Thank you. Oh, um, Mr. Gilpin. Just, just to pick up where um, GM Pruham ended, uh, it's probably likely that the Brown Act suspension will remain in place at least for April. And you know, as I indicated in the comment or re related to the public comment, this is kind of really an evolving process for public agencies across the state. Uh, I'm interested, uh, Mr. Hunsucker kind of foreshadowed that this may be how we do things in the future. I think it could be a pivot point, but clearly at this point, the regulations only allow us to do this so long as the social distancing regulations are in place. And 
under, under these provisions, we need to give the public the opportunity to observe and address the meeting uh, in this format, which we're doing, and it is an evolving process. The second point I wanted to raise is if the district is currently providing what's known as extraordinary emergency protective measures as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, we'll need to take certain steps to ensure that we're eligible to receive financial assistance from the federal government. Um, our uh, disaster people in the firm who have done work in Puerto Rico and, and down in Houston uh, issued a legal alert today uh, if you're interested in it, uh, there is the ability to get reimbursed for what are known as Category B uh, under the FEMA's Public Assistance Program for extraordinary protective measures that have been taken. Not all of our costs would fall in there, but some of them certainly may. And there are steps that we'd have to take to ensure that you're eligible for uh, potential receipt of those funds. Uh, the biggest one being a request for public assistance form, which is due to be filed on or by April 17th. So I'll, I'll work with uh, GM Prum in this regard. Uh, that's all I have to report. And President Evans, if I may add, I yes. think I mentioned it at the last meeting, we are tracking all of our costs. We don't know if we'll be eligible for anything, but we, we know we, you won't be eligible if you don't track them. So we're, we're tracking all the COVID related things and then if there's an opportunity to apply for reimbursement, we'll sift through it and make whatever applications we can. Excellent. Um, the San Diego County Water Authority had their meeting. It was our first one um, teleconferencing and for 36 plus people, it went really well. It was sort of like our first meeting. It was fairly brief and quick. We didn't go through as much um, conversation or detail, but it went really well. Um, I thought the um, it was also of interest, and you probably saw it in the paper and aware that at the D cell plant, they've got their skeleton crew actually living on the premises for 21 days plus, I guess, to, to make sure things are going <laughs> safely. And I'm hoping we don't have to do that. But looking at the background, you look like you're in a wonderful place, uh, at least Mr. Gilpin, for being... <laughs> <laughs> trapped in your seat. So um, we're, we're going to go ahead with the rest of the meetings uh, this coming month as planned, uh, but it will also be teleconferencing. And I think that's it. So Encino Waste Authority. Uh, Encino Wastewater un unfortunately has uh, canceled uh, <coughs> meetings for the last month. And this month, I haven't heard a word from them, which is very unnerving. They're usually on the ball. So I don't know, uh, Glenn, if you've heard anything. I, I have not heard anything yet. We are going forward with our general manager's meetings. Um, I, I believe they'll be having a meeting in April. Uh, we're having a GM meeting next week, so. And Director Ellitharp, did you have one? Have you heard anything either? Uh, no, not with Encina. Hmm. Okay, well, keep us posted. Standing committees? No, nope, no one's meeting. Director reports on meeting conferences and seminars. How about you, um, Director Sinella? <laughs> no, as you can imagine, I've not attended any of them. Oh, you haven't, okay. Uh, Director Elithar? No, nothing to attend. And Director Martin? Nothing to attend. Well, well, probably won't see anything till May. All right, do we have any other comments on upcoming meetings? It's the end of our business then, the director's comments and future agenda items. Well, I would just like to say thank you to all of you for being so great about identifying yourself and waiting to take turns. It's amazing, you're all doing a wonderful job. I wanna thank it and for getting this, or IT to get this up and running and um, and for staff and you for keeping it going the way it is. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a great April. I miss seeing your faces. All right, we are adjourned. Bye-bye. Thank you, staff. <laughs>